And you're leading that charge, which is okay. secretive album. <laughs> I'm trying. Wait, one song you did mention, you, you have revealed you got a song with TLC. Yeah. Crooked Smile. Crooked Smile. And that's a that's a song you there's like YouTube footage of you testing it out or doing an early version of yeah. it and all that type of stuff. Like I could, why yeah. did that song still stick and like became one of those songs that still felt right to be on the album? Yeah, so that song, um, there's a long story behind that song. Like you the, can tell the that creation story, is you don't want it, no, it's <laughs> like it's that long. There's so many little pieces that lined up for that song to happen. But that's one of the songs where I wrote the original on on tour with Drake on my little studio bus or whatever. The Club Paradise tour. On the Club Paradise tour, and and it was on the underground. I released it too. It's like a more underground sounding song originally. And when I did this foot action show in L.A., which was only like 50 kids there, it was a private. Yeah, that event. was crazy. It was like yeah, a it was real like intimate thing. private event. And I wanted to make, I was like, damn, how can we make this shit special for them? I was like, let's perform a few verses. And I was like, well, I'll do, like, you know, Man on Fire, I'll do Crooked Smile and some other shit that I did. And, and when I did Crooked Smile, you'll see it on the, on the video. I didn't know that my, my, my keyboard player, Ron, was going to play the shit that he played. He played this beat that I had made, like, some time before that, he just played the melody oh, so for. So when it. you say in the video we're gonna use that, you really did use that. I really that whole part because you say that you're like yeah, but it sounds it. So, you'll hear it, that's totally different. You know what I mean? But it is the it's brought to what he was level. playing. Yeah, was what I ended up using. But I I flipped it and shit like that. But that's not the important part. How the song was made. The important part is what the song is about. The song is about crooked smile. When you get some type of um, notoriety, you got. You got people that just ride with you and they don't give a fuck what you look like. They like, yo, I fuck with this nigga and what he's saying because he's speaking to me. But then you get some people on the outside that's like, A, they like, ah, oh, he ain't as good as what you're saying he is. And then they also like, look at this nigga eyebrows, man. Oh, the eyebrows. Every time I'm on an award show, they're like, yo, look at this nigga teeth, man. It's like... And, and like I said, we're in this we're in this Twitter day and age where LeBron can see niggas talking about his hairline and he can't run from it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like I can't run from the shit. So what I did was I took what they were saying about me and flipped it, and 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 basically said like, yo, you can't fucking talk about me. Like I'm gonna talk about myself and empower other people to embrace their own shit because everybody has something that the world makes them feel they're lesser for, you know what I mean? Whether it be your nose, whether it be your smile, whether it be your skin, whether it be your weight, whether it be your hair, there's always something that somebody's gonna remind you is not perfect about you, so that's you know what Crooked Smile is gonna What's be. What's making you grow your hair out? That's a new thing. I just stole that from Jay-Z for a recording the album. <laughs> no, but now the album's done, you haven't cut it. Because so. now I've gotten used to it and shit, but I'm, maybe when the album drops, I'll cut it, I don't know. But <laughs> that's why I grew it out, and now I actually kind of fuck with it. You was like, that's a rapper thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I just stole it from Jay Z. That's it. <laughs> just blatantly stole it. You actually know Jay Z. That's great. Yeah. Well, I that's allegedly, <laughs> <laughs> according to the people, I don't even know the nigga. You gotta sneak a photo with him next time you with him. Yeah. Yeah. You have to vine him. Can you vine him real quick? You said what? A selfie? Oh, sneak one with Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nothing. Just chilling. Yo, Jay. <laughs> Come on, man. I love when they do this. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about your man Eve for a second, because you put Eve in the Dreamville thing. You Dreamville niggas is walking around with a whole like different level of swagger right now, man. What's what going does that on mean? What do you mean? Y'all are just y'all are just like, you know, y'all the young movement and feeling yourselves right now, nah, man. You, you know why we, we just feel like we we got it. Like we went through a lot of shit and 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 we're grateful for it because we learned a lot of shit. Like, all that shit that I'm talking about with my first album that I had to go through, man, I'm grateful for that because I feel like it created a monster. Like, I'm stronger, I'm smarter, I know way more. Like, Power Trip is a perfect example of that. That was effortless. Like, that flow, there was no thinking behind that. So, with Dreamville, it's the same thing. It's like, we feel like, as a, as a young company, we saw this shit from literally the ground up and learned a lot, you know what I mean? So. Our future, I feel like, is, is brighter. It, it's going to be the long way. I notice everything I do is the long way and the long route, but I feel like, you know, we're we going to figure this shit out. So speaking of the future, so how do you see the rest of your playing out? You're going to drop this album. You're going against Kanye. Boom. 
And then what do you see the rest? You know, Crooked Smile might be a single. Yeah, probably, yeah. Right? Drop, drop the album, Crooked Smile. I'm sure the people will choose uh, the single after that. That's how it works. You drop your album, the people tell you what the single is. Um, and then I'm going on, I'm touring the album in the fall. I'm going to give, I'm going to get the people like, I'm going to get the people like two months to live with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Learn the words. So when we come, it's like, like an July, excitement July, for July, August, and then nah, come in like the fall. August, Sept yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. And come in like late back August, to school, September. Back to school. Exactly. And come with the tour. But in the middle of that, I want to, I really am feening to produce like somebody's whole project, like in that that little like oh, six week period, you know what I mean? I just haven't figured out exactly who it's gonna be or what. I want to get in with somebody. I got a producer itch, is what I'm saying. Because even now, when I was done with the album and I finished the album, I was complete. I felt good, unlike before when I told you I was like, ah, oh, I still got more in the tank. Yeah. I felt complete, but the production side of me was like, it's still like. I want to make beats, you know what I mean? I, I be thinking of beats yeah. and shit. So you I gave feel some like to Talib Kweli recently too, right? Yeah, I'm on I'm on Kweli album. I got one on um, this is I'm 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 excited about that too on Kweli album. But there's this kid Elijah Blake that signed a No ID. Oh and, yeah, um, yeah, Elijah yeah, yeah. singer, very talented. He signed a Def Jam, uh, Def Jam and No ID, and I got one on his album that is retarded. You know what I mean? It's like even the story about how it happened is 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 dope. So. I just want to get in with people, and I really want to do a project, not just like one off. Whole I would, thing. Yes, like I, Kendrick Lamar guy. That's what they want you to do. Yeah, of course, with. of course. <laughs> that's gonna happen. No, but do you feel? Do you feel like that people they're gonna hear Born Sinner and they're gonna kind of like jock J Cole the producer side also? Like that that's gonna be like a thing where you're gonna be more even more high demand, not just as an artist but also as a producer because of your production on that album. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> That's because the yeah, for the intro, like it's very, it's very next level your production. Thank you, man. One. Thank let's you. Let's talk about it best I can. Yeah, let's do a couple quick more. questions. Just quick questions before we get out of here. Anyways, okay, I yeah. wanted to know, um, how do you feel in the future? Will you be uh, signing new female rappers? So, is that a plug for yourself right there? You saying? <laughs> oh. I got to ask. Dreamville well, will sign anybody that's talented and dope. Yeah, but on some real, like man, the game needs. Great female rappers, you know what I mean? Real female rappers, I'm yeah, just gonna yeah, say. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, no, I don't wanna put it on the spot. Oh, like no. That. Next up, next up. Yes. Are you going the same route the way, um, like, what's his name? Like, Lil Wayne went with Young Money and Jay went with Rockefeller and Kanye went with, um, Good Music. So, Dreamville, that's gonna be your own label. So, you already had the production, you're the rapper, so you're gonna lead that team in, like, your, your record label, basically. Yeah, I mean, I mean in, a, in a sense, I think the difference is my shit is so organic. Like, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't go, like, looking for people. Like, if you look at the people that's associated with my team and, and, and Dreamville affiliated or Dreamville for real, like, it's all family. I just had to realize that, oh, shit, I've been blessed enough that along this path, I just met the most talented niggas. If y'all know this nigga, Kanai Finch, He's probably the most talented producer that I know, but he also is an incredible, like people don't even know, but they're gonna find he's an incredible songwriter and he raps, you know what I mean? And then you got Elite, you got Omen, you got Boss. This is all, this is all family. I didn't go, I mean, that's gonna happen. Yeah. I'm gonna go it's find organic. somebody. It's an organic Right, but right now, this is, this is just family, you know what I mean? Let's get somebody further back. Get Hi. Girl. Okay, so I flew in from Boston wow. just for you. Question. I love you. It's incredible, Anyways, thank you. Um, so I want to know, when are you dropping the, Ke well, I heard Rumors, Temptations, there's an album dropping with you and Kendrick. I want to know when it's coming. So what's, what's the question, about the album? Yeah, do, do you day. have like a next nah, year, it, two years? No, I, I, I can't say an exact, we haven't talked about an exact date. What we talk about is, yo, the minute we both get four weeks, you got to understand, that nigga, first of all, he came out and so he has, to tour, he has to tour his album, he has to do that, you know what I mean? And I'm trying to make a fucking dent with my album, so I have to do the same thing. So we have to find maybe a month where we both are free, you know what I mean, and, and knock out a large majority of the album. I will hope that next year we could do it. You know what I mean? Thank you. Let's get the brother right there in the middle with the blue. The blue right there. Yo, I go, I go to St. John's too. St. John's. St. John's. Yeah. Queens. This is a college brother. What year are you? Question, question. So my okay. question for you is, how do you feel that your college experience helped you later on in the future right, you to go. get nice where you are right now? I like that. I love you, Cole. <laughs> Thank you, man. It definitely didn't uh, 
Shh. Definitely didn't help with my grammar, clearly, because <laughs> I Twitter don't know the difference Twitter. between tweeted and Twittered and whatever. But I don't, I think just it gave me a, a different perspective to rap about. You know what I mean? Like, of course, clearly, I guess I know more about ah PR and shit like that. And like public relations, I know a little bit more. But I will say this. Nah, fuck it. This nigga's trying to cut me off and point other people out. Nah, I want to say this. I want to I wanna say this. You get people that's like, man, cars be rapping about going to college. Like, nigga, Jay-Z made 13 albums talking about selling drugs and you love all them bitches. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> let me talk about the shit that I actually did. You know what I mean? So I want to say that. Hi, I'm Kiara Lopez. I'm from the Bronx. Oh, she nervous. Kiara Lopez. <laughs> she nervous. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to ask, what was your idea for both album covers, the um, non-deluxe and the deluxe version? Good question. Great question. Good question. Yeah, great question. Great I'm question. slipping, man. God damn it. Yeah, I thought he would have asked that shit. <laughs> <laughs> the album covers. Album great covers. Question. Great question. What do you want to know? What was the inspiration? The standard of deluxe. Oh, why the difference? Ah, people. because oh, the reason for both is, is duality. Well, describe you, each one. Describe why each one... Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, I don't like it's art. At the end of the day, those joints is really works of art. You know what I'm saying? For like, are there seven lines for sinners? If you want to interpret it like that, it could be for <laughs> sinners. But clearly, the the obvious thing is that there's a there's a duality. There's a there's a dark and there's a light. I will tell you a little um a little piece of information that's cool because y'all paid y'all money to come here. The the deluxe cover that you see which I'm very happy about right now, that wasn't the original Deluxe. On the last day that I had to turn in the album, the cover that I had, which was this baby, like, in heaven, basically surrounded by, like, clouds, like these, it's like puffy clouds or whatever, it was just dope, clouds, like, crazy. The baby wouldn't get approved, like, the parents wouldn't approve the baby for an album called Born Center, so the last minute we switched it to what you see now, but I think it worked out better. All right, we got like two more questions. I want to get Meg in here. Um, I just want to know in the, um, the interview with Respect, you said that you wanted to be looked at as a yay or ho figure with this album. And I wanted to know that now that the album's done, do you think you've accomplished that and or has your goal changed? What was that in? What was this in? Oh, my thing. Oh, yeah, you, you made a great point about how people don't view you as on the level of a Jay-Z or Kanye, but that's actually where your fans believe you are getting to that point. Yes. And, you know your desire to be that. And I mean, it's funny, because ironically, who would know that later on you'd be challenging Conley literally? So exactly. talk about that, like trying to get to that point where people really look at you, like you said, with these idols that you're either equal or better than them. Um, I feel like I don't know how to answer that. Like, that's always my goal. It's not even just with this album. If it don't happen with this album, guess what? It's going to, like, I'm going to go again. I feed off of rejection. I feed off, I actually work better when you don't believe. I go harder, you know what I mean? So, so that's always the goal, because I, f I feel like there's a certain level of respect that I deserve, or like, not deserve, but I'm, I'm looking for, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I ain't proved it to you yet, all right, watch. You know what I mean? So yes, that's, that's always the goal. You know, what's, you know what's funny from know, knowing you and knowing Drake, I think people kind of underestimate the competitiveness, like it, like individual competitiveness, like right. how competitive you are, how competitive he is. Like, yeah. I think people underestimate your competitiveness. I think so too, because they don't, they get, they interview me, and I, and for like the first three, four years, I was very humble and like very respectful, and I still am, but now it's like, all right, man, there's a certain chip on my shoulder. I'm tired of playing so nice. You know what I mean? Like, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna let people know what I'm coming for and what I'm aiming at. One more, one more, one more. Join Hi, Hi. <laughs> I'm Samantha. She's I'm nervous Samantha. too. You nervous? I'm nervous. Yes. Right. Um, this just like made my life. But anyway, what is one of the biggest lessons you've learned being in this industry? <laughs> Don't let Elliot Wilson hear your album before you're ready yeah. to talk about it. Nah, man, you did really <laughs> good. You did really good. Thank you. In this industry, uh, I just learned a life lesson in terms of creativity. In terms of being an artist, you know what I mean? Like, especially being an artist, artists and commercial don't go together. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it actually doesn't mix. No matter who you think is like, oh, he's so pure, like, man, he never, trust me. There's a, there's, you gotta walk this line when it comes to like being an artist and like 
being having a commercial responsibility or like a commercial pressure to it. But one thing I learned, I learned about navigating that. And I learned that ultimately, as an artist, no matter if you paint, if you draw, if you rap, if you write, whatever you do, you have to follow, and it sounds generic, follow your heart. Do what makes you happy. Like, do what brings you excitement. The only follow that. You know what I mean? So I, I, I can't. This that goes take back to hour. the beginning, though. That I'm great to see you like in this very happy. You're very happy with right. the Born Center shit. You're in a great space. Right? Yeah, Born Center shit. It's just life. Yeah, yeah, right. Born Center, you're right. June 18th. June 18th. You guys ready? You guys ready? I want to thank J. Cole. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Out.